particular percent fit. The referee was Jerry Evans from Bishop Briggs, commentator Jerry McNee. So away we go, and uh, two sides with plenty to prove. Hearts having lost the last two league games, including last week's match here against Kilmarnock. So they must take something from the game. Celtic, of course, having lost in midweek to Rangers, and they'll be in determined mood. That's Levine's clearance. Mackay challenges. Mac stays in there for Celtic. There's Hogg. It's headed on by Locke. A touch from Robertson to fashion out. And set through there for Scott Leach to chase, but uh, Pat McGinley it was who provided the cover. Yes, he knows all about uh, this ground, having been here so many times uh, with Hibernian. This is Scott Leach. Uh, misunderstanding there between McNally and Mowbray. And perhaps an early sign there that uh, Celtic defence has to settle and settle quickly. That's Tosh McKinley's cross, the header! And inches away there from John Cahoon. Well, John Cahoon playing against his old club. The ball swung in by Tosh McKinley. And the glancing head up. And not far away. And that's a free kick against Mowbray. Well there by him on John Cahoon. Well, so perhaps of uh, the type of players to unlock the Celtic defence this afternoon. Like of Robertson and Cahoon. And the tall figure of Fashionu to knock things down to them. Gary Mackay plays it in looking for Fashionu. It's Mackay again. Hogswell forward. This is Fashionu, but uh, looking for too much time on the ball there. It's returned by McLaren. That's Gary Mackay. Mackay sweeping in the cross, looking for Fashionu. Bonner's in trouble there. It's headed away by Mowbray. And Slater sends it out of play. Well, Celtic defence looking none too clever. Bonner was struggling all the way there. The high one aimed in. And this Fashionu challenged Mowbray up the touch. Uh, Hutch looking to like their side at the moment. And uh, Hogg has been moving forward at every opportunity. He's in there again. This is Leach climbing for it, but uh, McNally does enough to knock it away. Only as far as Mackay. And that's Hart's throwing. Highland played by Hogg, but uh, the ball drifting out for the goal kick. Now it's a special day for. Gary Mackay making his 400th league appearance for the club. Only Henry Smith has made more appearances. And this is Leach doing well under pressure. Gets it to Mackay. Robertson to the right. And uh, Mackay decides to have a blast. Well, if Robertson to his right, Cahoon to the left, and Fashionu ahead of him. But he decided to have a blast. That's McStay to Slater. McLaren's with him, and uh, McLaren late there, and he signals an apology to the Celtic player and over towards the referee as well. So the free kick, taken shot. This is Dovchek, through for McAvenny. This is Slater, Trini, better play by Celtic, Slater again, and uh, Gary Locke did enough there to Holt Slater, and the ball spun into the hands of Henry Smith. But nice build-up play by Celtic. You see the slight deflection there. That took the sting out of the shot and uh, made it easier for the goalkeeper. And now Celtic coming forward through Darius Dovchik. This is Slater to McStay. Brent, McStay again. Again, Hearts closing their opponents down quickly. Forcing Celtic into playing the long ball. But, uh, Trini does well there, gets it to Slater. That's a good effort and well saved by Henry Smith. A terrific shot by Slater and Smith reacted brilliantly. There was no point in trying to, to hold that one. He did the right thing and pushed it away. But uh, 
a vicious shot from Slater. Looks like Trini laying it off to Grant. It's left there by Slater, but then steps Gary Mackay for Hearts. It's through for Cahoon. Tries to find Robertson, but uh, Mowbray recovers well. This is Fashion out. Going through to Scott Leach, he tries the shot. But, uh, but never worried Pat Bonner, but well worth trying. The opening was there. Scott Leach looking for his first goal since joining Hearts. Having a blast, but uh, well wide of the target. Kaveni did enough there to keep possession for Celtic. Now it's Mick Stay. Uh, Bonner's clearance leaving a lot to be desired. It's still not the strong part of his game. He does not like the pass back goal. Yet his kicking from hand has uh, been excellent. And there goes the half-time whistle in a largely disappointing first half. Hearts looked the likelier side in the early stages, but perhaps the best chance falling to Celtic. There was excellent play on the left involving Slater, and he sent in a vicious shot, which was charged down by Henry Smith for the corner kick. The half-time score here at Tynecastle, Hearts nil. Celtic who get the second half underway. And this picture, always a tight one in uh, recent times. Celtic took five points out of eight in the league exchanges last year. There was never more than a goal in it. And uh, Celtic also won in the League Cup match here against Hearts by 2-1. It's always very tight encounters. This today, the 57th Premier League meeting between the sides. And, uh, Hearts do not have a good record, they've won just 10, Celtic have won 33, and 13 of the games have been drawn. So next day, to Boyd. McAvenny, nice turn by McAvenny. Still it's McAvenny. Well, he did well to create the opening, but uh, he got under the ball just as he hit it, and sent it high over the crossbar, but uh, he opened up a little gap there on Hogg. Pace of the game lifting again and how it needs it, but that's a shocking pass by Peter Grant. Straight towards Fashion out. So Grant in there winning it back. This is Slater. Because of the run by Slater. And the ball taking a deflection and going behind for the corner kick. Well, Celtic will want to see more of this from Slater. And uh, no mean feat there, taking on the pace of Craig Levine the ball coming off the defender's foot and Celtic have the corner kick and again Mowbray moves towards the edge of the penalty area it's Slater who takes it and well handled by Smith under a bit of pressure this is John Robertson trying to get away from Boyd still it's Robertson but, uh, it goes the other way, and the Hearts fans are howling. But, uh, the referee indicating that uh, Robertson had been tugging away at uh, Boyd shot. And we see the Celtic player claiming. And uh, the referee, Julia obliged. Jerry Evans from Bishop Freaks. William Brady has been down to the track side. And these are testing times for the Celtic manager. And it's Hormick's day for Celtic. It's left by McIverney. He locks under a bit of pressure here from Slater. And the Celtic player being forced to backtrack. This is Dubchek. McGinley's in there with a good header. And Celtic coming so close. Jerry Craney did everything right. Kupchak sending in a knockout ball. McGinley did really well here to get the header back across. And Craney coming so close. Very reminiscent uh, of the move and the goal against Dundee United last week. The ball to the far post. McGinley's header, but uh, on that occasion Craney finished. But so unlucky there. 
This is fashion out and taken out of the game by Mowbray and the uh, Celtic player will be called over here by the referee. So a word of warning suffices, but uh, he took fashion out right out of the game. There was no attempt to play the ball. Again, Hogg and Levine have gone forward to join Fashion out. He's been closely watched there by Boyd. It's Locke who sends it in. Levine attacks the ball. And the overhead kick there from Graham Hogg. But certainly the two defenders causing problems at set pieces. It was Locke who played in the high one. Craig Levine got the initial touch and then the overhead kick from Graham Hogg. If that had been on target, well, it might have provided a terrific goal. And that's half possession again. This is Gary Mackay through for Cahoon. It's Locke. Leach. Josh McKinley's breaking on the left, but uh, Leach cuts inside again, gives it to Locke. Highwind played through, looking for fashion. And a chance one for Robertson and Hearts take the lead. 62 minutes gone. And Hearts make the breakthrough. John Robertson gets his fifth goal of the season and the combination working there from Hearts Fashionu, the provider and the finish coming from Robertson Fashionu climbing high above McNally and Robertson getting in ahead of Mowbray and finishing in clinical style a little man has scored more than 200 goals for Hearts in his career and he strikes again this afternoon so it's Hearts 1, Celtic 0. Uh, Celtic with it all to do. They're unbeaten away from home in the league so far. And they get themselves a corner kick. Well, Celtic responded within a minute or so last week when they went behind to Dundee United. Can they do it again? Mowbray and McNally move forward. And uh, both will feel that uh, perhaps they owe Celtic something. Both of them failing to cut out the threat there of Fashionu and Robertson. So it's Dubcek again with the in-swinger. Sends it to the far post. It's Mowbray's header. And Henry Smith's down there. And takes possession. So Mowbray getting a, a good header. Dovchek's cross way to the far side. The downward header and Henry Smith had to react quickly. Looking for Craney. Craney taking on Hogg. And the free kick awarded. And Craney impeded there by Hogg. And the referee immediately awarding the free kick. Perhaps a chance now for Celtic to do something. Mowbray goes forward. So too is McNally. And Anil's the there on the far side. It's Anil's header. Touched by Mowbray. And McNally sends the chance wide. And he knows that was a real chance. So the free kick coming across. O'Neill got his head to the ball. There was a touch by Mowbray. And the chance was on for McNally. Challenge going in from Locke, but Celtic have it again. That's Peter Grant switching the play to Tom Boyd. Boyd going in the outside of Mackay. Levine, though, using his pace to get across. And it's in a comfortable challenge. This is Craney. Trying to set up McStay. It's well charged down, though, by Gary Mackay. And there's Slater. And Henry Smith taking that at the second attempt. Well placed shot by Slater. And putting the keeper under some pressure. Curling it in there. And uh, Henry Smith taking that one at the second attempt. Boyd sending the high one in looking for Mowbray. And that's handball. Well, Mowbray will be booked for that. So clearly handled by the Celtic centre-back. It was Tom Boyd who floated the ball away to the far side and uh, handball there, and that will be a yellow card for the 
Celtic defender. It's just fortunate it wasn't the other, the other end of the field. Or it been red. So the yellow card shown to Mowbray. There's Levine stepping in ahead of Craney. It's swept away by Robertson. Hearts will just want to keep the ball in the Celtic half now. And as we move into injury time, there's only one option here for Pat Bonner. Mowbray still well forward. Slovene's clearance is not a good one, it's Mowbray! And that was an awkward one for Smith. And Mowbray, almost Celtic saviour. They had a clearance from Levine, who's played extremely well this afternoon. Not the best there, and that ball dipping just before the goalkeeper, and it made it awkward. This is Cahoon. What plays it forward, and the flag has gone up. And there goes the final whistle. And two precious points for Hearts, uh, thanks to John Robertson after 62 minutes. The high ball was played in. Fashionu got the better of McNally in there. And Robertson stepped in ahead of Mowbray to send the ball into the back of the net. The final score here at Tynecastle. Hearts 1, Celtic 0. So both points for Hearts, one yellow card picked up by Celtic. Afterwards, Jerry spoke to John Robertson, but first, Hearts manager, Sandy Clark. Sandy, that was an important one for you, especially after losing here at home to Kilmarnock last week. Yeah, there's no question about that. We lost to Kilmarnock, then we had uh, Motherwell before that, two league games in a row, uh, never scored a goal, lost two games, and it was really important to bounce back today. It takes a while when uh, somebody new comes to the club and is trying to adjust to Justin's style. But we changed it just ever so slightly today. The manager worked on something on training Thursday. We felt we benefited the team. Um, just a little shuffle on the, on the front three, and it worked great. And we're getting on the end of Justin's flex. He's a handful. I mean, everybody in the Premier League will tell you that. And he done tremendous for the goal. It was a great flick. I've got to put it to you, John. On our pictures, it looks like handball just before you, you put it in the back of the net. Well, I wasn't aware of it. I just went for the ball with, I think it was McNally, Mark McNally, and it, it just broke. And I just prodded it in. So if it says it was a handball, Certainly didn't look it from where I was. You've built a solid squad. Are you, are you happy with what you've got? Yeah, more or less. I don't think you're ever 100% happy with anything. You're always looking and uh, we've still got a bit of money to spend here if I want to do it. Uh, but we're certainly not far away. I'm not happy at the, the lack of goals that we're scoring. But I think uh, through time that'll come true. Defensively, you must be happy with the way the team's shaping up. Uh, Craig Levine looked very solid at the back, uh, along with Hogg and McLaren. Yeah, Craig's had a great start to the season. He's probably been, um, without a doubt, our most consistent player. And he'd done very well for Scotland as well against Switzerland. And uh, when you've got someone like that being so solid at the back, it obviously generates confidence in everybody around them. And to be fair, not only has Alan come in and played very well in Graham, they've also had the backup of the likes of Jim Weir, Neil Berry, who have all come into this position and done very, very well. So Sandy's got his squad together now. It's a big squad, there's about 21, 22 players. And everybody knows, I've had it already this season. I've been dropped for uh, a lack of consistency. And everybody knows that 